it's Diane with Shellcraft One and my old barn door. And I wanted to come and do a craft with me, just um, playing with collages and clusters. I know I have the um, like the little collage and cluster packs in my shop, and I've been working with them a lot, and I'm absolutely addicted to them. So I thought I would kind of give you an update on, um, you know, a, not really an update, but just kind of do a video on some different ways that I use the collages and the clusters, um, you know, in different areas and different things that I do with them. Just kind of having some fun. So just playing around. Um, and so I just thought that I would bring you along and just let the video play. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is I learned something in the process of trying to do these collages and clusters and things like that. So, um, <coughs> what I start with is I start with <laughs> scrap paper. And y'all, this is just so stupid. This is not even all of my scrap paper. This is just the shabby looking ones. I have a whole big pile of farm style ones and then a big pile of just regular you know, just random papers and stuff. So anyway, I start with papers and then I'll pull out my fabrics and you guys have seen this tray before. Um, and then I have this little box and it has, um, these are my little sweet little bag of goodies that I got from my friend Rhonda and the stamps that I got from her, the laces that I got from her and all the yummy, yummy fabric scraps that I got from her. So I have that. And then I have this. <laughs> this is um, embossed pieces. I just did a video on the embossed pieces. These are just like random, um, different color, plain kind of papers, music papers, um, graph papers, ledger papers, um, old book pages, you know, kind of like the, um, sort of the background of what I would do. You know, coffee dyed paper. And then I have some tissue papers. I have some neutrals and book pages. Um, and then I have different style, like these are vintage papers. This is wrapping and wallpaper. Um, these are farm style papers. <laughs> Shabby papers. So I have this box. And then I have all kinds of doodads and ribbons and laces and things that I decorate them with. And here's what I found out. When I go and pull all of these things out, I tend to get a little overwhelmed. And I, I mean, I have found myself just standing here at my desk looking at it going, okay, where in the world do I start? So I throughout the process of learning how to do these and kind of finding my own style, I have found that it's easier to pick a few of each thing and pull those out. And, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I have this little tray. Okay. And this is what I'll take to, let me zoom out for you just a little bit. This is what I'll take to the living room with me at night time. Um, you know, when I'm in there watching TV with my husband, um, you know, I'll pull out just a few pieces of my scrap papers. Um, some of the, just the plain papers, you know, music sheets, um, graph paper, things like that, old book pages, and I'll put them on the one side. And then, which this is kind of, um, it doesn't have as much in it right now because I did some the other night and I haven't refilled it. Um, but then basically I will take, like I'll grab this little tray here and I'll just, I'll grab a strip of this and I'll grab a strip of this and a strip of that and a strip of that and just kind of put it on my tray. And you know, at the time that I'm doing this, I don't know what I'm going to be making, you know, as far as what kind of um, embellishments or whatever that I'm going to be making, but this just kind of narrow, I have found that if you have too many choices, it tends to be a little bit overwhelming. So 
it works a little easier if you just pull out a couple of things and what I do, my goal is to pull out a few things and put them on my tray. And then I get rid of this. Ooh, let's get a piece of that too because that one's super cute. Okay, so I've got paper. I've got fabrics. I've got a little bit of cheesecloth here and some other textury stuff. Um, I've got, um, like this is from, a, I guess, a wedding dress. Rhonda sent me that. Then I've got some laces and some ribbons here. And again, I've used most of everything that I had on the tray because um, I was making them the other night and I just haven't come in and refilled it. And then I had this little um, little thing. It had the, just little teeny flowers and I've used most of those up too. And then I have these paper flowers. We can put those in there. And then I'll grab a few buttons of each kind of style. I'll grab some brads, um, some little blingy things. Just different kind of things that I think that I might would like on whatever papers that I'm working with. Like, these are the shabby kind of papers. You know, so I want the shabby kind of colors. And I have a separate, whole separate stack for um, the farm style stuff that I use. So then, what I do is I'll take this tray into the living room with me and I will use what I have on the tray. In doing that, it makes it a little less overwhelming for me. It, it makes it a little easier for me to just grab what's at hand and make clusters out of that. And when I empty the tray, then I'll come fill it back up. And if I'm tired of working with the same kind of papers, I'll pull different papers. So this is a good idea for y'all to use, you know, if, if you're getting overwhelmed when you're starting to pull all your stuff out to do clusters with, because... I mean, there are there is so much stuff that you can use to do your clusters with that it it does tend to be overwhelming. So now that we've gone through that process, I'm going to move this, and um, and we're going to go through, and I'm going to show you what I do. I'm going to zoom you back in just a little bit, so you can see a little better. Hopefully, that's not too much. Let me get on my tippy toes. Sorry for the shake. Okay, so then what I do is I make my clusters, and this these are the little packs that I have in my shop um, that I have ready to send to you, and they're just the basic clusters and the basic collage strips. Okay, usually the collage strips, I really don't do anything else to them. I was looking to see if I could find some. Hang on, let me see. Do I have any? I know I have some somewhere. Let me see if I can find them. Aha, I found them. Okay, so um, these are collages. I don't want to mix this up. I'm going to go ahead and put these back um, with that bag because I know those are the right amount in there. But, you know, with the collage strips, I mean, they're pretty. They're so pretty that it really doesn't take a whole lot, uh, you know, to decorate those up and, and make them pretty and make them a pretty embellishment on the page. So, I have those. Here's some of the clusters that I've done. And sometimes, I want a little something extra on my clusters. Okay, so, like, I'll take, sometimes I like them just plain like this, just with the staple. You know, this would make a cute little pocket. I'll show you. I think I have a journal over here that I've got started. Okay. So I have this journal that I have started on and I have been trying to finish this booger forever and just, you know, I get sidetracked. <laughs> Squirrel. So, um, but I'll take like, let me just flip through here. I don't even know where I've gotten. This is my sewing journal that I had started. Um, it's been a while since I've even looked in this package uh, to, and pulled this out. You know, but I'll flip through and find a page that needs a little something, which these pages I like to go back and spray on or stencil on or something. Because, you know, me and the white pages, I just don't like the white pages. But, like, one of these that are just plain, you could take that and you could make it a little pocket right there or a tuck spot. Or you could take one of these 
that has the pretty little floral decorations on it and you could put it at the top to make it a top excuse me goodness to make it like a little top tuck you know and you can tuck something up in there um, you can put it on just a little sheet like this um, so you don't always have to have something on it but sometimes I do like to have something extra um, you know on my little clusters so then you get even more overwhelmed because let me find a spot to put this y'all have got so much stuff pulled out <laughs> sometimes you know I want something over the staple because sometimes I love the staple like this one I would probably leave and just leave it with the staple because I think this is super pretty I love the word and so I would just leave it like that but this one I, I would want something it's like a focal point in the center so you can take anything you want to take you can take a flower you can take a butterfly and glue a little butterfly on there you can take a pretty little flower let me see if I can find one you know put a pretty little flower on there um, you can take a button usually if I put a button I like something underneath the button just to accent it a little better so I'll take like a piece of cheesecloth and cut it up let me just grab my scissors here. Now, y'all, I'm just playing, so there's not really a plan for this video. <laughs> so, we're just going to see where we go. You know, so I'll take a piece of, of cheesecloth, and I don't want that big of a piece. Just something to kind of stick out from under the button a little bit. So, I put the little cheesecloth down, and then I'll take my button a little glue on it and you can string a string through it or whatever if you want to but sometimes I like to just leave my buttons plain you know but that just kind of finishes it off so to speak um, if you want it that way but again like I say sometimes I just like the plain but I mean you could put something on this this would be super cute if you put like a little flower or a butterfly on there you know just an extra little embellishment so some of the embellishments I use, um, of course I use cheesecloth, I use buttons, sometimes I'll use lace under the button, I'll use my flowers, um, you know, I use these little buttons, um, let me see what else, um, sometimes, let me see if I can get this little drawer out so you can see, um, you know, I'll use these little Tim Holtz things. You know like the little butterflies I don't want it to overwhelm it you know but this one would be cute on there it wouldn't overwhelm it this one would probably be too big but that one wouldn't you know you can take little things like that and you can kind of make it look different according to what you put on it you know so I mean there's the little Tim Holtz things um, you can put stamps I love, love, love these stamps that Rhonda sent me. So, like, you could take one of the little stamps. This one's super pretty right here. Let me just see if I can grab it. You know, you can just take a little stamp. You could put a little cheesecloth up under the stamp just to kind of give it a little extra, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just makes it stand out a little better. I can't think of the word I'm looking for. You know, but you could put a little stamp on there. I mean, that's super cute. Or, I like the tape that goes across there, so I might would even leave it plain. Or maybe just put like a little, um, like a little bitty butterfly button or something to that effect to where you can still see the tape. You know, or you, it doesn't, see, that's where I run into a problem. I find all these pretty papers and I'm like, I want that to show. I don't want to cover that up. And so... I have had to learn that it's okay to cover some things up, you know. Um, like this one I took, and I just had a little bitty, this was already together. I found it in that little bag Rhonda sent me. Um, but it's just a little bitty button and a little applique. So you can take an applique, like I have this little bag that she sent me. Just sweet, sweet little pieces in here. You know, you could put something like that. That would be cute on there. Um, you know, and some of them I'll take and cut them in half, 
and then you can use them on some. So I just kind of wanted to give you some ideas of some things that you could do. Um, I think I am going to put some decorations on these since I've already got them out here. Um, this one I'm not going to. This one I'm not going to because it's already got something. This one I'm not going to because I, I don't know. Do I want something on this one? I don't think I do. And I do think I'm going to put this stamp on this one. So let's just do that real quick. Where is... Sorry for my reach, guys. But I've lost the lid to go on my glue in all of the... Y'all, I've had to move my craft room out three different times for them to come and fix the roof. And then they had to come inside and fix the ceiling. And then they had to replace the faucet in my shower. And in order to access it, they had to go through this wall right right in front of me. So I had to move everything again. It's just been... I am over construction. I can, I can tell you that for sure. All right, so we're going to put a little glue there. And I think I want a little bit more cheesecloth than that. So let's get us a little bit bigger of a piece. <laughs> I've got my window open and it's blowing blowing the stuff on, around on my desk. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of this stamp. Y'all, this little baggie of stamps she sent me is just glorious. There are so many pretty stamps in here. Okay, and so we'll just put him right here. And then that just kind of finishes off that little cluster. Okay, so that one's done. And that one's done. So that's just some ideas of some things that you can do. Um, to decorate your clusters if you want to decorate them or to make a cluster um, I also have I meant to grab this down before I got started and I don't know if I can get it out right now hang on I need a bigger cry frame guys anybody else have that same problem <laughs> I'm sure we all need a bigger craft room, don't we? So I have this little tub of things. Um, and these are um, where, where I put my, you can see that, it's sheetrock. <laughs> I've dusted everything in here like four different times. But it's like every time they come back, they make a mess again. And they came back this morning and I didn't realize that they did that. So I'm going to have to dust again. Um, but anyways, I have different shapes in here, like these little flower shapes. Um, some of these are completely empty because I've used them all, but I've got little heart shapes. You can put these in your clusters. You can put them on top of your clusters. Like um, this one would be cute to have one of those little hearts on. See? Or you can use these in your clusters. You know, you can staple them in as, as one of the pieces or whatever. Um, so, anyways, I just I have these little shapes that I can use for that. Um, I think down here I've got little octagons and some stars, which these are really cute to use in the, uh, in the farmhouse ones. So, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to decorate your um, your clusters and your collages. So hang on, I'm just going to try and grab one other thing out. You can also use, if I can find them. Oh my goodness. Sorry guys, I told y'all I'm just a little, um, like I have these little washi stickers and stuff. Like you can put those on there. That'd be cute on there. Just a cute little circle. So anyways, lots of different things that you can do. This would be pretty on there with the birds. That'd be pretty as a topper. Or you can do words. And I'll show you here. I don't think a word will look good on that one because it's got that chenille on the top. But like on this one, I made this in the last video that I did. And let me just scoop some stuff out of the way. Um, so like on this one, 
you know, you could take one of these Tim Holtz words. Now, since there's so much white, I would use one of the ones that has the, the black background. And these are not really words. They're more sayings than they are words. So let's find one. Okay, I like this one. It says, Be You Bravely. So you could just kind of put that on there a little bit sideways. You know, and that tops that off and makes it a cute... It just kind of gives it that little bit of a finishing touch if you don't want just the staple. So like on this one... Um... No, let me find one that I want it on. Okay. Like on this cute little cluster. You know, it'd be cute to do a word. And y'all remember in the last video that I did, I showed y'all these little strips of cardstock that I had left. And so I think what I want to do is write a word. Let me find a cute little marker. Let's see, we've got pink on here. So let's do... Let's do the word in purple. So we could do like faith. Now my handwriting's not the best, so I apologize in advance for that. And then I would just tear this out. Or you can use printed words, you know, print them off your printer or whatever. But sometimes I love people's handwriting. And I think it just gives it a little something extra when you have it in somebody's very own handwriting. Tore off the top of my F, but that's okay. Let's tear it just a little bit smaller. So now you could ink the edges of this if you wanted to. And I think I'm going to just to kind of make it stand out just a little bit. And I already have some ink on this, so... It'll just give it a little extra something. Okay, so then you could just put that on there. And it just finishes it off, you know. And gives you a little, a little extra piece of decoration. So you just put it on just like that. Okay, so now that we've um, decorated our clusters and our collages, now the question is, what do you do with them? What in the world do you do with them? So I am going to move some stuff so that I can move some more stuff in <laughs> so that I can show you some different ideas of things that I do with them. So hang on. Okay, <clears throat> so here is a whole bunch of clusters that I've made. These are the ones that we just made. These are some that I've been making. And a lot of times what I'll do, I like to use on things that are a little harder to glue on, like the plastic things sometimes, like the plastic buttons, um, they, they don't glue on as easily. And sometimes you find that they'll fall off. So what I do is I take glossy accents and even though glossy accents doesn't dry as quickly as the other glues do, it tends to be a little stickier and it dries a little, um, I mean, it sticks a little better with things like this. So I'll take, you know, the glossy accents and put it on there and then put a paper clip on it to hold it until it's good and dry. Usually about, you know, 20 minutes or so and it's good to go. So I just have me a little stack of paper clips that I keep um, you know, at hand so that I can, you know, it gives me an extra hand. I, it, I don't have to sit and hold it, you know, until it dries. So here's quite a few, um, of the clusters that I've been doing. I've got myself a whole little basket full. <laughs> so, um, you know, and you can see I've decorated them like this is a button. I got a little flower on that one. This one I put a little bow on. I hope y'all are seeing this in the camera. I'm not even looking at the camera. Um, this one, I used one of those little little tiny dolly pieces and a little rosette in the middle. Or a, it's a flat back cabochon is what that is. This one, I used some of that wedding garment or the wedding dress trim. This one, I used one of those little tiny crochet doilies. And I just put a little cheesecloth in behind this little rosette. 
And this one, see, you can just put that on there and leave it plain. This one is just a little flower. So anyways, um, I thought I would take a few of these. See, here's one with a stamp. Um, this one has a flower and a button. So it's pretty much, you know, however you want to decorate them. Now this one, I used a brad. I thought that was a really pretty brad. And so I just punched a little hole. I have a tiny hole puncher. And I just punched a little hole and added a little brad. And that can be used for shabby chic. It can be used for vintage. It can be used for farmhouse. It's just kind of a really generic piece. So you can do whatever you want to with it. And then here's one with the little embroidery piece. Um, so you can use those. Are they called? No, appliques. Not embroidery pieces. Appliques. Sorry, guys. So anyways, so I thought we would just take a few of these. These are clusters. And the difference in a collage and a cluster is the clusters I use staples on and the collages I sew. So I like to have a variety of different ones. Gracie, do you need to go potty again? Girlfriend, are you drinking too much water? Okay, so we're gonna move these out of the way. And what I was telling you about using these as bases, like you can take one of these and let's just do I think I just took all of my stuff out. Let's see what we have in this little box. Y'all, I have scraps everywhere, so. <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous, um, the amount of scraps that I have, but that's okay. We're going to get through them doing collages and clusters. <laughs> I actually have thought about maybe trying to do, like, another collage pack, like I did not too long ago, where I, um, I uh, put some in my shop. I made little packs of them and put them in the shop. Now I want to tear the edges. This is one of the little um, embossed pieces. I think I said embroidered pieces a while ago. Y'all know what I mean. I'm a jing bat. I meant to say embossed pieces. So I know that I had said on the last video that I'd show you, you know, what you can do with these in your clusters. And I showed it on the last video, but we'll just make another one just to give a good idea okay and so then we can put what do i have moved everything back to the living room and i have um taken everything away what do i have let's see okay i have a piece of this from when we made the little book. It's a lot of purple. Let's do a piece of this. This is nothing y'all haven't seen before, so it's not something new. It's just something that I'm playing around with and thought I'd turn the camera on. Okay, so we're just going to put us a little staple there. My stapler, y'all, I'm going to have to get another stapler because that one's got to where it wants to catch and it don't want to cooperate. So, so anyway, these are kind of like the clusters that you can make um, with the little embossed pieces that we made in the last video. So, so there's that. Now, I told you I was going to show you some different ideas of things I do to use um, the collage pieces and the cluster pieces. So this is the little booklet that we made in the last video. It's just a little, you know, a little journal book that you can tuck into a pocket or a tuck spot or even an envelope. So um, you can take uh, like a little collage strip. Now you would want to find, I don't know, I think I do want to use a collage strip, but I don't know if I have one small enough in this pile. I don't, I don't have one small enough for this little little book in this pile in here so we'll we'll use a cluster let's find a little cluster that one's too big perfect so say so you can just sit that right on there it decorates it up again you could ink around the edges you could use pink ink or brown ink or whatever color ink you want to use it's your little booklet you can make it like you want it but that's super cute, you know, and that's cute to tuck into a little pocket. Do I have a book over here that's got a pocket? 
Well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and put him on here. So he can be permanent. Okay. Cute little decoration. And I think I'm not going to ink the edge. I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm going to pull back over my little sewing book. Poor little neglected feller. I'm going to make it one day. I'm going to finish it one day, that is. So I know that, so see, you could just use this to tuck right into here, just like that, and it's cute sticking out of that pocket. I don't think I have any more pockets in here yet. Nope. So anyways, it's cute sticking in a pocket. Okay, so that's one idea. You can take like the little tag that we made in the last video and let's see if we have a small enough collage strip to decorate this tag. I should have made some more collage strips. I've sold a bunch of them. So I don't have as many of those because I haven't sewn many more. Let's see what we have in here. These are just kind of random clusters that are just kind of generic see that would be super cute on there you could do that one's too big that one's kind of too little unless you wanted to make it like a little bitty pocket down at the bottom just to kind of accent the tag that would be super cute and you could put a little button or something and um, that's got vintage wrapping paper on it and Let's see what else we have. There's one with a stamp. I mean, and you can make it different um, according to the different cluster or collage pieces that you use. You can make your tag look completely different. Let's see what else we have. Some of these are like farmhouse style. And I will show you some of those. Um, I don't like that on there a bit <laughs> but anyways you kind of get the drift where in the world I know I had some smaller clusters or collage strips hang on and then let me see if I can find them these are the farmhouse style ones y'all these turned out super super cute that one's too tall um I don't know that a farmhouse style one is going to look cute with the pink. But that one would actually look cute on there. So see, you can just de decorate, embellish it up on a tag. So anyway, you get the gist of what I'm talking about. It's a little bit crazy of a video, so I apologize. But that's okay. So you can put, put them on tags to decorate tags. You can... Um, put them on envelopes either embossed or not embossed I have one that's coffee dyed one that's embossed so you can just add this like right to the middle and it's super cute you know I think I would probably put this one here put this one here just super cute and you can even make this a pocket if you wanted to um, hopefully I was trying to check the camera to make sure y'all can see so you can put them on here as a pocket, or you can just put them on there as a decoration. And then you can tuck the flap over a journal page, and you've got a cute little decorated envelope. Or like this one, you could even use one a little bigger. Let's find one a little bigger. Well, if we get him the right way up, I don't want one that has coffee dyed background. Let me see. Okay, here we go. Oh, now see, that's pretty. What I would do is, let's just go ahead and do it. Let's just ink the edge of it. My ink, I need to get some new ink. Because my ink is running out. But that's okay, it'll be enough to put around the edges of this. 
anytime I put something like this on copy dyed paper, I just like to ink the edges because it helps it to stand out a little bit more from the copy dyed paper so that it doesn't all blend in. Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and just add him to this envelope. And let's just make him a pocket. If we're going to make him a pocket, though, we need to make sure our glue is all the way around. And then you have an envelope that you can put in a journal. You can sew it in or you can tuck it over um, the side of a page and, you know, paper clip it on or however you want to do it. And then you have a spot here to put a little tag in, which that tag's too big, but you get the gist of it. Okay, so you can use them on envelopes. Let's see what else we have over here. Okay, let me move some of these out of the way. Um, the little brown bags that are in my shop, and I know that some of you just got some in your um, uh, in your spring embellishment kit. So let's do let's do a farmhouse cluster on this one. This one is super cute. So you could do this one to the side over here, and you could glue it this way like this, and just make it a little tuck, which I think that's how we want to do it. So let's do that so these um the collage strips and the clusters you know they're things that you can make while you're sitting at the tv watching tv and they're almost instant decorations for whatever project you're working on um you know you can instantly um just have you a little basket like i have well i've got like four or five of these baskets because i do have them in my shop and they sell you know pretty good so um I have several, you know, I've got a good variety. But, I mean, that's super cute to add it to, um, like, a little bag like that. And then if you wanted to decorate the whole pocket, you know, you could do it just like that. Not pocket, bag. <laughs> Y'all knew what I meant, didn't you? Let me see if I can find something else. I really like that with the cows on it. It's super cute. Maybe I'll just keep that. I don't know. That one's really cute, too. I like that with the blue jean on it. So you could do either one, however you want to do it. But I kind of like that with the cows on it. So you can, you can make it to where it's just like a little pocket, or you can glue it completely down. Like this, I would probably just, well, let's just go ahead and do it. We'll just glue him down, because I'm in the process of making a journal of it he can go into. And with this one, if you wanted to embellish it even further, you know, you could put a little eyelash trim or a little bit of cheesecloth and find a cute little button see I've got a bunch of little vintage buttons in here let's try that one and I do think um, if I can find my coffee dyed cheesecloth that I had here we go So I'll just put, where do we want it? Let's put him down here. A little bit of that. I think the cheesecloth is too big. It's overwhelming the button. Let's make him a little smaller. There we go. You could even put um, eyelash trim. Let's pull a piece of eyelash trim. And sometimes I like adding both cheesecloth and eyelash trim to a project. Just gives it lots of freelies. 
And we'll just put a little dab of glue there and poke our eyelash trim down in it. And I like that you can see both the cheesecloth and the eyelash trim. And then we'll take our button, put a little bit of glue, and then plop him right down in the middle. I got glue all over my fingernail now. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So then we have a cute little bag that can go into a farm style journal. It can go into a Western journal. Whatever kind of journal you want it to go in. Just because it has cows on it don't mean it has to go into, you know, a farm top journal. But I think that's super cute and I love the button. Isn't that button pretty? Love that. Okay, so you can do it on bags. I am going to find a cluster or something. This is just driving me crazy, y'all. Y'all don't laugh at me, but I just need something on this tag. So I think I am going to find a cluster that we can put on it and make it cute. Let's just find one real quick. I just figure, you know, if I'm going to be doing this, I might as well get something finished <laughs> instead of standing here spinning my wheels. Okay, this one's cute. I don't know if that's big enough, though. See, I'm either finding them too big or too little. That one's too big. Too big. Well, she's upside down. But she works. Yeah. She works on there. So, see, when you're making your clusters, you don't really... I don't really pay attention to the size of my clusters. I'm just making them because if you make them that way then you really have a good variety of different sizes of things um, that you can use for your project. So we're going to go ahead and glue this one onto the tag. Do we want to ink the edges? No. I don't think I want to ink the edges because I would want to ink those edges brown and we have pink ink on the tag. So we're just going to leave it. Okay, so we're just going to put that down right there. And we could have made that a pocket. It's just according to the preference of what you want for what project you're working on at the time. So now we have the tag completed. I feel much better. So we've got envelopes, tags, bags. And then I'm going to show you. Let's make a, um, I'm going to make another one of these little booklets. And we'll use a farm style collage on this one since it's more of the farm style type book. Let's see. This is my favorite tear ruler, the one with the little tiny edge. I just really like this one. Okay. Well, I didn't tear that very good, did I? And I have a book that I'm making right now that this one can go into. I did find that it's easier to tear one page at a time with my little tear rulers. Since I don't use the little water pen, I don't take the time to do that. So, you know, and with this being as wide as it is, you could spray it, ink it, um, stencil it. I don't really mind the white. I like the um, contrast, so I don't mind having it white. And this one, let's go ahead and tear that off. We'll fold that piece. We'll tear this. I'm just going to put three, three pages in this little booklet. I'm sorry, I'm out of the camera. I'm so bad about that. It's so hard to tell. I need to mark me some little spots on my mat so that I know. But I have to move my camera so often. That's irritating. He didn't want to tear. Okay. So we'll put him in there. And then we'll do one more little piece.
shape. Now he's still a little bit too tall, so let's tear it at the bottom. Oh, I tore him crooked. There we go. Okay. All right, so now we have our little booklet. And my stapler is not going to fit on this booklet. So hang on, I'm going to sew it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished sewing it, and then I went ahead and <laughs> thought I was videoing and did some other things, and then I looked up and the camera was not turned on, so I'll just show you what I did. So, <laughs> crazy me. Um, so, I sewed the little booklet together, and then I put a little cluster on the inside, and they did a little tuck pocket here. And then you've got your little pages that you can journal on. And then I put another little cluster, not cluster, a collage strip on the back of here. And then you can use that for a little tuck. So now there's a little booklet that you can tuck into a journal, into like a pocket or a tuck spot. So I'll show you. I have this journal that um, I'm working on and it is complete. It's not even anywhere near complete. This cover um, will be completely redone um, so it won't have this same cover um, but this is one of my bigger size journals um, that I do and this is a farm style journal so I just was going to show you you can go in like I put I showed you the book in the other video too so I'm going to be a little bit confused as to what all I showed you but I put a little cluster here not a cluster but this is a collage strip as a little tuck spot so you can put a little tuck spot there um, I was trying to see oh I did um, I, I was going to show you you can take these little bags and you just fold them up and sew around them just like this you just sew around them and then I just added a little cluster and then you can glue this onto a page you can either glue it this way and make the pocket come out this way or you can glue it this way and make it two pockets up here and then you got a little pocket here. You can do a little collage here. Um, you can put a collage or a cluster there. Or you can just glue some things down here. But if you're going to be taking stuff into this pocket, you may not need to put anything here at all because you won't be able to see it behind whatever you tuck into the pocket. So you can do that. And then I have these little bags that I was going to use in this book as well. And so, I was trying to find, I'm just going to leave that there so I can attach it later. Because I know the video is getting kind of long now. I don't think that I've put any pockets into this journal yet. I don't think I have. But anyways, you know, you can take these little bags and you can put them on a page. And you can either wash them in or you can glue them in and make them a pocket. So you could like glue here and then it can be a pocket behind and then you have a pocket in the bag. You know, you can do either one. And remember this one has a pocket right here. So that'd give you three pockets. And then let me go back to where I put that one little tuck spot in. And I'll show you with the little booklet. You can just tuck that down into the little tuck spot and you've got a little journaling book that you have extra um, journaling room that you can use for lists or journaling or pictures or whatever you wanna use it for in the little tuck spot. So um, those are things that you can use um, your uh, collages and your clusters with. And I'm just gonna leave these inside this book so that I know that I made them to go with this book. And so, yeah. So those are all the fun, or some, not all, there's, you know, all kinds of, um, oh, I was going to show you too, um, I had this little bag that would look cute with one of these little clusters or collage strips. I'm going to use a cluster because I don't have any smaller collage strips in here. Let's see if we can find a small one that will look cute on this little bag. 
that would be cute it's a little bit tall but I think it would be okay Let's see if we can find one a little bit smaller I have so many in here Ooh, this one would be super cute let's do that one okay and this will probably be the last one that we do because I know the video is getting way long so we'll just I'm not gonna make it a pocket because there's gonna be plenty of pockets using it as a bag so we'll just put him right there and that's super cute and that'll be really cute in my little sewing journal so you can make this a pocket back here somewhere so you just put it on the page like that and it's a cute little already decorated pocket okay and then the last thing I was going to show you is um, I have these pharmacy bags that I use you know you can fold these pharmacy bags in half put you a cluster on this side and a cluster on this side or a collage strip you know like a pretty little collage strip that one's too big let's find one a little smaller <clears throat> That one might be too big, too. Let's try these. I use the bigger ones to make just pockets on a page. So, like this would be, well, that one would look cute there, you know, on this bag. And this bag, what I would do is I would sew around it, make this a little pocket, and then I would actually fold it. And then, you know, you can use it as like a, a journal page. So that would be cute to do with that one. But then this one, I want a collage or a, cl a collage strip that's big enough to cover up, you know, all of that. But you get the gist of it. It pretty much covers it. But anyways, I would probably make one specifically to go on this to make sure that it covered everything. So anyways, those are some of the ideas and ways that I use my collages and clusters and so i thought i would just share those with y'all and give you some ideas of what to do with them so um, i'm gonna make that it for the video because it's way too long now <laughs> since i messed up and didn't realize it wasn't recording so anyways thanks for watching you guys let me know if you have any comments or questions in the comment box down below or if you have some different ideas of things that you do with your collages and your clusters and um, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And I thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. Big hugs.